The tale of a brand new volcano emerging where one did not previously exist has for many years amazed millions of people around the planet. Yet, while the story of Mexico's Paracuchin syndrome that erupted from 1943 to 1952 is well known, an equally fascinating story of a volcanic home that was born in El Salvador is lesser known. As, within the nation of El Salvador, what was previously the site of the separate Santa Ana volcano gave birth to a brand new stratovolcano in 1770. Over the next 196 years, this brand new volcano known as Ezelco would erupt almost continuously, producing intermittent ejections of ash and lava and what were primarily classified as Trombolian eruptions. Due to the frequency of eruptions at this volcano, Ezelco became a major tourist attraction, with many at the time comparing it to Italy's Stromboli volcano, calling it the Lighthouse of the Pacific. A major hotel was even built specifically for the purposes of the forecasted number of tourists that this volcano was expected to bring. But then, disaster struck. After approximately two centuries of near-continuous eruptions, Izalco suddenly stopped erupting in 1966 and has not erupted since. Despite never beforehand going longer than 11 years without an eruption, it has now been 57 years since its last eruption as of 2023. So, will this famed volcano ever erupt again? The answer to this question is still up for debate, although I have my own hypothesis which I will state later in this video. But first, the other question that is probably on everyone's mind. How is Ezelco a distinct volcano if it's literally on the southern flank of the also still active Santa Ana volcano? Shouldn't it be a mere satellite cone of Santa Ana? To this, I answer that despite its placement, Ezelco is a distinct volcano. This is owed primarily due to its composition, as this volcano erupted both basaltic andesite and basalt, while Santa Ana primarily erupts andesite and tracky andesite, but also due to the fact that its geochemistry suggests Izelco has a completely separate magma source than Santa Ana. All of this makes a bit more sense when you realize that a third separate potentially active volcano, the Cota Peque Caldera, is located about the same distance away from Santa Ana that Izelco is. Before the Izelco volcano was born on February 23, 1770, unusual fumaroles had appeared in 1658 at the very spot this volcano would eventually grow. These vents soon got larger and more intense over time, until a pit crater of sorts formed before finally Izelco's first eruption occurred. Over the next 196 years, Izelco's 51 confirmed eruptions had essentially the same pattern, building its central volcanic cone to a prominence of 650 meters or 2,133 feet, erupting a little over 2 cubic kilometers of lava and ash. Each eruption lasted between a few weeks to several years in length, producing an average of around 40 million cubic meters of basaltic andesite lava, and could best be described as moderately explosive, sometimes coating nearby communities in a layer of ash and eruptions which look something like this video clip. However, during the interval when Izalco erupted about once every three to four years, two eruptions stood out as distinct. The first was Izalco's most powerful and deadliest eruption which occurred in 1926. In that eruption, several powerful volcanian explosions occurred, resulting in the generation of pyroclastic flows which swept several kilometers down slope, striking the village of Matazano and resulting in 56 deaths. Also of note was Izalco's last eruption, which was absurdly brief, low intensity, and only erupted 900,000 cubic meters of not basaltic andesite, but basaltic lava. My thoughts as to why Izelko's last eruption had a different composition is that this represented the bottom of its magma chamber, which had been undergoing fractional crystallization. Despite this, I am still of the opinion that Izelko will one day erupt again. Since Izelko's last eruption in 1966, its fumaroles have decreased from what was presumed to be a peak temperature of more than 750 degrees Celsius to less than 100 degrees Celsius today. These cooling fumaroles have however allowed for something quite special to form, specifically seven rare minerals to be first discovered at this very volcano which had previously never been found anywhere else on the planet. These minerals are known as copper vanadates containing both the elements copper and vanadium, with each example forming when compounds ejected initially as a gas cool and solidify on a surface below in what are termed as sublimates. But remember that collecting is forbidden on and around the Izelco volcano, so if you see any of these unique minerals, take a photo while observing them from a distance and do not touch them. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.